I'm in wrong. Okay, so guys, there is a two primary memories. First, we have done CPU, that is primary memory. Okay, so in a primary memory, we have a RAM and a ROM. Random access memory, read only memory. RAM stores data temporarily. In ROM, data is permanent data. Okay, in the what are the data in the ROM, it is permanent data. RAM data stores for temporarily. RAM is a, a kind of volatile memory. ROM is non-volatile memory. What is volatile memory? Volatile memory means when you turn off the device, when you cut down the power supply, okay? So data in the device is gone. So you lost after data inside a device. Non-volatile memory. What is non-volatile memory? Even you disconnect the power supply, you turn off your device, data will be remains in the non-volatile device. In the device. Okay. Example for non-volatile memory is, of course, ROM is non-volatile memory. Not only that one, hard disk, SSDs, pen drives, SD cards, these are all non-volatile memories only. Okay. So last uh, one day, I got a one YouTube comment that is how to check ROM size. Because I told about RAM size, then how to check ROM size. Guys, ROM is a cheap site. It is a chip on your motherboard. We don't change ROM. It is built or maybe it is fixed on a motherboard. It contains some information that is called frameware. You don't read or write data in it. Okay, it's a fixed shape. So what are the size of that memory? We don't consider. Okay, but RAM is not like that. RAM is will load the data and give the data to processor. It load instructions and data from I/O devices, input output devices, storages. So then RAM give to the processor, processor to RAM, RAM to devices. So RAM stores data temporarily and the more RAM increases, the performance also increases, means it can able to store more data and it is very easy flow. Okay. The first one is RAM, random access memory. I feel very bored <laughs> for a copy pasting. So when I do copy pasting, I will feel very bored. But uh, now we don't have a choice. <laughs> More time it will take if you are if I'm now doing one by one. Okay. First one is we'll discuss about a RAM. Guys, primary memories are RAM and ROM. Secondary memories are hard disk, CD ROM, floppy disk comes under secondary storage devices or secondary memories. RAM is a, of course, primary memory and RAM also called as main memory. Main memory. Okay. It is a primary storage of CPU. Your data is stored in RAM is data or instructions are stored in the RAM is temporarily. It is a volatile memory. Of course. Guys, in a RAM, there is a two type of RAMs are there. One is static RAM, another one is a dynamic RAM. Static RAM means SRAM. This SRAM is built based on a pure form of transistors, means 
pure form of MOSFETs. They use it. pure form of transistors and it is very high speed and very costly also so what they use so they use this SRAM as a cache memory which built inside a CPU so when I showed it as CPU specifications uh, 3MB cache memory L3 cache memory L2 cache memory okay 24 MB cache memory, 12 MB cache memory, 8 MB cache memory. What is that cache memory? It is nothing but SRAM, which is built inside of your CPU only. Another type of RAM is dynamic RAM, which is DRAM. This dynamic RAM has different type of RAMs. DRAM, ECC RAM, EDO RAM, VRAM kind of stuff. Okay different other type of RAM solves again. This DRAM further developed into SDRAM. DRAM means dynamic RAM. As DRAM is further developed means more mechanism it is increased. Synchronous dynamic RAM. Synchronous dynamic RAM. This SDRAM later it is become DDR SDRAM double data rate DDR double data rate SDRAM. So again this DDR got a new versions DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, DDR5. DDR5 is also in market for a Intel processor 12th generation, latest process. The process which is uh, released at the end of 2020 to 2023 startup. So the process supporting DDR5 model also. Okay. So most of the current running is DDR4 and next is DDR5. My laptop having DDR3 there. Yes, you want to buy a RAM or you want to add a new RAM. Okay, so and you have a RAM. There is a certain RAM specifications. RAM always we keep one word first that is size of the RAM. How much RAM you have? 8 GB RAM, 16 GB RAM, 4 GB RAM, 32 GB RAM. Okay, how much RAM your system is having now? So like the first one is size of the RAM. Second one is model of the RAM, actually model of the RAM. Are you using DDR3 model, DDR4 model, DDR5 model, DDR2 model? Model of the RAM. Another one is speed of the RAM. Another one is speed of the RAM. Every model uh, uh, RAM has a certain clock speed. The clock speed of RAM and uh, processor FSB must be matches so um, what type of ram you have to take it is purely depends upon your processor and motherboard okay because the clock speed should be matches with the cpu specifications and uh, your motherboard ram slot specifications okay 1600 megahertz 2400 megahertz 2666 megahertz 3200 megahertz, 3400 megahertz, 4100 megahertz, like that. Different type of clock speeds are there. And of course, there is a voltage level, high level, low level type of voltage sensitivity. You want to replace the RAM or you want to attach a new RAM. So there is a two things you have to check it. One is CPU specifications. Second one is motherboard specifications means it should be compatible with a CPU and motherboard compulsory. Okay, so earlier days you have to check with operating system compatibilities also. 
Okay. Because, for example, you take Windows XP, it support uh, maximum 4 GB RAM. But later on days, so different operating system support a higher size of the RAM, also 16 GB RAM also can support it. Maximum RAM support this. CPU specifications and motherboard specifications are very important than operating system. Of course, it should be operating system also. Okay. So first of all, for CPU, how much maximum CPU support is there? Like this is a processor. I have a i7 11th generation 11800H model. It is. It is already having 16 GB RAM inside it. Okay. So either in this one you will get the details from here. You can see expand up to 16. So it is a waste one. Why? Because of they are giving two 8 GBs. Two slots are there. Two are both are filled. Okay. So you have to remove uh, both 8 GBs and add two 16s for at least for 32 or 32 plus 32 I have to add it. Okay. It's expandable up to 60, 64 it is given. But if you go to this. Up to 128 GB. Okay, that's there. There are giving, but you have to check. Okay, so this is a desktop and this is a laptop, guys. In desktop, he is changing the RAM. So, first of all, CPU compatibilities size of the RAM, maximum size of the RAM, speed of the RAM, memory types. It's a DDR3, DDR4, DDR5, which one it is support. You can check it. Okay. And next one is motherboard RAM slots, supporting RAM slots, memory type support. For example, my motherboard support DDR3. I want to put a DDR4, I can't do it. On DDR3 laptop or a DDR3 motherboard supporting, you cannot put a DDR4. Why? Because of the slot is designed for that particular type of RAM only. And voltage level, guys, it is there. So compulsory plus verify that. RAM. How to add a RAM or to replace the RAM? I told CPU and motherboard compatibility. Easiest way is if you have existing RAM, existing working RAM on your laptop or a desktop, better to take that specifications, go to market, buy with same specifications and attach it. Even I have done that one. So I opened my laptop backside and taken a picture of uh, that uh, RAM. I went to your market and I showed how much it is. Or, uh, I brought a laptop actually. So first of all, I showed a picture. I want this with this specifications. I want a new RAM. Already it is 4 GB plus uh, I want to add a 8 GB. So I brought a 8 GB and I installed 8 GB in it. Okay, guys, do you understand about RAM? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, which type of question interview is going to be asked to us about this, uh, which you are, which you have taught to us? Difference between RAM and ROM. What is processor? Difference between RAM and ROM. What is volatile, non-volatile memory? Okay. Okay, but sir, uh, the deeply you are uh, briefing us, uh, so the interviewer will ask uh, to us very deeply or? No, 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 no. I'm okay. telling this is just for a uh, main information, okay? Uh, we cannot guess what they will ask, but they may ask lightly, but not very deeply. So with their small, small points, I'm covering, okay? Don't okay, worry. sir. Not only at interview, already I told, you must know things because you, you, that is what technica, technology, base technology it is. Okay, you know the basics, you can do anything upon it. Okay, you can learn next anything. 
very easy it in better way so can you tell me how much uh, topic is left uh, currently uh, we have done uh, uh, networking portion networking troubleshooting also completed right? uh, service base completed this is pc hardware and operating system and there is some troubleshooting things plus uh, outlook vpn explanation is there that's it but uh, that, that's that's that uh, only two uh, topics uh, is left not like that it is there is a topics it depends upon timeline i'm trying to cover uh, all important one okay okay <clears throat> Sir, is there any uh, date, uh, any fixed date of technical interview? Uh, that is, I don't know. So there is. Okay. Okay, sir. But guys, again, I'm telling, prepare daily. Every day, because I created this single page concept. I can take a, for few batches, have two, two batches mainly. So what I have done, I created a PPT, I showed a PPT, I explained it. Okay, even I didn't put the notes also, direct PPT sharing. Even I don't know what I explained, they don't know what I have taken. So yeah, they are done, completed, bye bye, that's it. Okay, but why I am giving a single notes? Even if I try to type it, few things I will type it, add it. Sometimes times I will take it from other notes. Why? Because of uh, their already modified information is there pictures are clear pictures are there okay guys this sure. is for you. one link you can able to access all the notes so okay. you don't uh, tell us uh, to solve the issue uh, on uh, tools which you were uh, describing yesterday uh, yeah like uh, service now helix and all that yeah i didn't given details i given names only yeah, like uh, I'm, I'm, seen, uh, I'm telling that uh, you didn't tell us uh, uh, how to solve the issue or how to solve that ticket incidents through using that those tools uh, with the tools, uh, we can't start anything. Just a given uh, tool information. That's it. Okay. Uh, I have shared two videos, right? Uh, one is uh, N12 and N16. But that is service based. Then, sir, who will be taught uh, uh, that tools to us? No, no one is. That is already that the people are not there now. There are service like, guys. Sir, there. Uh, the one who got selected, then uh, uh, his or uh, her training will be done. Yeah, once so, you are done technical. Yeah. Once you are joining, there is a small, uh, there is a training is there. Product based training or work based training can be there. Okay. Okay, there will be a training for. Be a training and product based are. Uh, product based, not technology based. Product based training, work related training, they will give. Okay, only you give us a basic uh, technology yeah. training. Most of the people are having lot of barrier between their qualification to the basic computer knowledge and networking knowledge. Basics are required to know what they are telling, what is our work we are doing. Basic things we should know. Okay, sir. Got it. Okay. So, you know, first, first on the told see, lot of people still believe this is the CPU. But what is the CPU is look like this one. See that much difference is there. Okay. Small details. Information that's people from different backgrounds, no? Okay. And also, guys, daily read things and search. Try to learn. Okay. Even if it is for first time, 
it may give you confusion may you think it is very difficult but you try once again it is very easy relevant information lot of information available internet nowadays okay so in my time it is only test books okay you have to go through test book and read it and understand it you don't understand it <laughs> you cannot understand it because the english that much english also i don't know so i have to tell you like okay. practice learning speaking to others so like that i learn okay but by getting some issues in with the laptop desktop so trust by solving it by asking questions like you you are asking questions like that i learn lot of things so study daily guys don't think like tomorrow is an entire what i have to do now that is don't don't put that kind of stuff okay so that's why i'm giving all the notes in one place only so you read you will understand you if you think it's like your college days academies tomorrow is an exam tonight i will study it's not examination anyway it is an interview so interview can able to ask interviewer will ask any question from anywhere <laughs> we don't know <laughs> what question they will ask guarantee okay but we given a basic structure of questions so maximum means this is the main main questions okay try to learn like that right, very good okay guys these rams are in a different packages you see this is a bigger size see this is length and this is smaller size so see it is this is called a dim package okay we use it for a desktop purpose this is desktop purpose this is for a so dim package laptop purpose laptop purpose. and mini pcs sometimes it's like mini pcs have you ever seen what is the mini pc mini laptops mini pcs also there so these are a mini pcs this is our renewed by this is also a mini sir so this is a cpu yeah it's a cpu mini cpu yeah not cpu <laughs> it's a kind of like a yeah, total component so there is a from intel kind of stuff so in which uh, we use this type of uh, cpu yeah you can use like a desktop a tv you can connect it so there is a certain basic specification you can see hdmi cable uh, ssd I mean some cable is there it's a usb c point cable lan connector usb connectors Okay, uh, DC power supply connected. Display port is there. The, another type of display, new display it is. The mic speaker kind of connectivity, USB power connector. Okay, so this is the uh, power card connectivity. This is outer cabinet. So you have to remove, and uh, you can attach back side of your uh, monitor kind of stuff, or you can connect with the cables. Thank you, sir. Not given more details in video also. So it is Celeron processor, dual core processor, fanless, six watt CPU, USB power delivery, and you will get 2.5 gigabit LAN, Wi-Fi six band is also there. Okay, 3.2 Type C port. It is a cost is this one. and you can you see it is not mention about storage or ram you have to buy additional storage and ram so this is ram small size means this ram is laptop ram so dim packages mini pcs so we buy ram or rom ram ram r a m And then, sir, which uh, storage is built-in storage? Uh, RAM. RAM stores data temporarily. No, sir. Built-in storage, permanent storage of uh, 
computer system uh, which is uh, like RAM or ROM? You take in a mobile. Okay. So in mobile, it shows a specification 4 GB RAM, 64 GB ROM or storage, right? Yes, sir. This is RAM. Okay. Data temporarily stored in RAM, not permanent storage. This is permanent storage. Mean not permanent means you can put a data, you can access data kind of stuff. You can fill the data. This is not exactly ROM. It is not even a ROM. Okay. It's not ROM. 64 GB is not ROM. But so for also people, we they are telling a ROM. Sir, mm -hmm. also we can change the size of uh, room or but not. You can't change it. That's what I'm trying to say. This is not room. This is EMMC. Hello. Sorry guys. Okay, this is 64 GB is called a EMMC memory. It is not a ROM memory. I will tell about ROM, okay, separately after this one. Okay, so dual inline memory module, small outline dual inline memory module, two type of RAMs we are using and another one is RAM bus inline memory module also we are using. Just to show the difference, this is DIMM package, so DIMM package is small size for a laptops and mini PCs, this type of RAMs for a desktop. So desktop RAMs not supported, laptop, laptop RAMs not supported, desktops. Okay, got the point why I told this story? Yes, sir. Okay. Each RAM has different type of pin configuration, guys. So different pin configuration and a notch configuration see this is small notch is there here okay that notch uh, represents it's like a compatibility means the different place of notch so for example motherboard support ddr3 you try to put a ddr4 it cannot be fit it cannot be even fit why because of pin configuration, notch configuration is different, okay? DDR3 supported motherboard, it support DDR3 only, okay? So processor, RAM and motherboard, three must be, you know, compatible pin configuration, slot configurations, notch configurations are very different. So we have to insert, we have to take compatible one only. So I have read then RAM related issues here. So this is again important. This time copy pasting everything. Yes, this is small issue it is. I try to start my PC, so I press the power button. So system perform a post operation. System perform post operation called a power on self test. First is post in a boot processing, first is post. In that time, it will make sure that all primary devices like a CPU, RAM, motherboard, motherboard components, built-in motherboard components are working on that. 
if it is working good then it will go to the next step of boot processing if this failure it is troubleshooting so here i am talking in a troubleshooting manner okay if it is failure what to do okay if it is a failure how you know it is failure first of all you cannot see anything on your screen it is a completely blank screen it's a dark screen only not even a, a no signal kind of stuff it's a dark screen you may hear the continuous beep sounds no keyboard led kind of stuff so it may think your post is failed you can think post is failure most of the time post is failure we blame on a ram only we blame on a ram only so why we blame on ram because ram mem loose connectivity is there means we, there is a fixed connectivity we insert a ram properly but sudden moment on a desktop or laptop but maybe because of the dust okay there is a possibility of dust on the ram slots so ram may not getting proper connectivity processor uh, is fixed on inside this uh, you can see this is a processor uh, a slot it is socket once you insert a socket and they will and closed and on it there is a heat sink and on heat sink there is a fan so mostly you cannot blame on the processor it's very fixed but ram is not like that like you move the cabinet ram may be that a loose connectivity sometimes the older the system multiple times people remove the ram and reinsetting a ram that also causes problem one time you inserted you don't touch it then it is dust also form okay you don't touch it dust problem for cleaning dust you remove and reinsetting remove and reinsetting loose connection so that's why people blame on this ram only one thing is first try to connect and disconnect the devices mainly ram ram loose connection ram failure means ram is not working the dust on ram and ram slots kind of stuff so then how should we disconnect or connect ram uh, each and every time yeah normally people do like uh, for cleaning purpose or for certain troubleshooting checking purpose or just for fun some people will show like uh, see this is how computer should be assembled and the assemble you know you know my career now it is everything online so i will can't able to show how to remove it it is offline i can able to prove so i will take one new system and remove the ram and show the people multiple type of attempts the loose connectivity is happen possibilities right okay and also dust if you don't touch your system you keep it one side there's a lot of dust inside okay so dust on the ram slots and on the ram also so what to do disconnect a power supply remove the ram take an eraser and clean the dust edges can you see ram slot edges are there no on this edges clean it with a eraser and there is a air dust blower is there dust blower is there simple blower it is don't use heavy blowers like a what we can say cleaning uh, dust cleaning air blowers are there air blowers normally good okay 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 but better to use hand blowers compressed air compressed air uh, uh, kind of stuff is there that is also okay good for uh, puff the air so like uh, sorry if you puff the air it will puff out uh, the dust particle from it on the processors also on inside the processor edges processor slots also we can able to clean it uh, do not use this vacuum cleaners don't use vacuum cleaners guys it is power is very high okay so use hand blowers compressed air kind of stuff light air so don't use this uh, air hair dryers don't use that one also it won't give powerful air 
it will give hot air. Okay, it's not a good thing. So use this kind of stuff, clean up the edges, try once again, or cross verify with the uh, other uh, pieces also. This is the RAM, guys. Look at this one. So clearly try to understand function of your RAM. There is a CPU, built in CPU, there is a cache memory. Inside a CPU, it is a cache memory which is inside that CPU chip. Okay, and there is a RAM and there is a IO controllers are connected with your IO devices. Keyboard, mouse, monitor, okay, your storage like a hard disk, CD RAM, all these things are connected uh, and communicating through IO controller only. Okay, this IO controller load instructions and data to RAM. RAM give it to cache, cache give it to CPU. In the cache also, there is a three levels L1, L2, L3 cache. Okay, so in the cache, instruction cache, data cache is also there. So CPU process your instructions and data, give it to your cache, cache to RAM, RAM to IO controller, and IO controller to the specific devices to where the data should be go to the specific device, like a maybe monitor, maybe storage kind of stuff. On your motherboard, guys, you have a north bridge and south bridge. There is a two chipsets called a north bridge and south bridge. The north bridge is mainly control the communication between RAM and CPU. South bridge control the communication between RAM, IO controllers and other peripheral communication is controlled by South bridge. So there is a two bridges, North bridge and South bridge. Okay. RAM to CPU, North bridge. RAM to IO controller and IO devices. It is South bridge. Okay. So that is the importance of cache memory. Cache memory improves the performance of processing. Why? Because of RAM to cache memory, see uh, speed difference is there. Cache is much faster than RAM and it is equivalent to CPU, CPU speed. So cache loads and give it to CPU as fast as it can. Okay, so that's the point guys. So this is the small troubleshooting, how you do regular troubleshooting also. Okay. Integrated circuits that are used for permanently store data, startup instruction, and other critical items. What is the ROM? ROM is also a primary memory. RAM and ROM, primary memory only. Without RAM and ROM, system won't work. Okay. CPU, RAM, ROM, of course, your motherboard is a, a important components. Okay. So, what is this ROM read only memory guys? So when what is this container ROM? So people who manufacture ROM chip, they build instructions inside. They build instructions in the ROM chip. They put a data and instructions in the ROM chip while they are manufacturing it. So it cannot be movable. You cannot modify. You cannot reprogram it. You can't remove it can't remove it. So people who are uh, want to work with this ROM chip, who need a ROM chip on their circuits, their um, boards. So there are uh, have to give this data to the manufacturer, ROM manufacturer, ROM chip manufacturer. So what they have asked, we don't give a what data should be in the ROM chip. We need a ROM chip which we can be able to program it. We will write a program, we will bundle our program into our ROM chip. 
So raw manufacturers manufacture a chip called a PROM chip. Programmable read-only memory. Programmable read-only memory. So they will give an empty chip and uh, the board manufacturers, what they do, they take a empty ROM chip, they burn the program inside. Once it is programmed, we cannot change. We can't change, we cannot remove it. But sometimes it is required to remove. Uh, so then what they ask, we burn the chip with a certain program. If something goes wrong or not required, we want to erase it. So they created a erasable program with read only memory. Then they created a electrically erasable program with read only memory. A prom chips are created. What is this? A prom chips is a rewritable. Means I program my ROM chip, a PROM chip, I, I burn a program inside. A program means a program or instructions or data inside this PROM, a PROM chip. Now I realize I want to change it, so I can change it. Okay, I can change it. It's like a rewritable. You can remove it and reinsert a new program in it. So that is a, a PROM chip. So we are all using a this kind of ROM chips. Guys, ROM chips are fixed on your motherboard. So like your RAM, we cannot change your ROM chips. Of course, we can change it, but that is not like a RAM. Not like a RAM. It's, you got a serious issue of your ROM chip. Your ROM chip is not at all working. You got serious error of your uh, issue with your ROM. So what you have to do? When you take your motherboard or your laptop to a service center, so they will send this ROM chip to a chip level manufacturer. They may, like chip level repairing people, they may try to change your ROM chip. Most of the cases, we don't do it. Like 90%, we don't touch it. 95%, 99%. Okay. <laughs> Rare cases. This ROM chip, they burn one program inside called BIOS. It is nothing but a firmware or firmware. Okay, so updated version of this BIOS is UEFI, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. You guys, understand up to here, BIOS means ROM. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is the use of this BIOS? Guys, not only in a computers. Computer, we put a name called BIOS. Okay. But you take in a mobile phone or AC or any auto start electrical kind of stuff, auto display kind of stuff. Okay. So they have a processor inside and there is a memory inside and there is a ROM chip inside. Which may contain some different type of frameworks. What is the use of this framework? It will help your system to boot up. First of all, you power on your system. System has to be power on, right? How to uh, power on the system, how to distribute the power supply, how to load uh, the instructions and data. Okay, what kind of display has to be shown like this for a startup, so it is very useful. Your BIOS is help system to boot. BIOS help system to boot. Okay, so in some case like there is a post operation. Also uh, by your BIOS as some test books as for some test books. Recognize hardware devices. When you power on your system, guys, when you power on your system, power supply is going to your hardware devices, right? From first of all, as some PS starts, power supply is distributed to your each and every components of computer. Okay, so system test. So make sure that primary components like motherboard, um, your CPU, your RAM, your BIOS, everything is working or not. 
that is called post operation for our self test operation so during the post so what is your bios will do it bios will try to recognize the devices what cpu is installed what ram is installed what hard disk is installed what cd ram is installed like that so recognize the hardware devices okay and bios also tells how to locate an operating system and how to load operating system and bios helps operating system to access the devices hardware devices because operating system may not may may not recognize all kind of hardware parts right so this your bios recognize the hardware um installed on your pc or connected in pc so it helps your system to understand there is a device with this specifications how to communicate with the devices okay this is about bios guys basic input output system okay bios is, is a program which is also called as a framework new version of bios is uefi unified extensible firmware interface bios is help to boot your system okay bios recognize your hardware devices and it will tell how to load operating system by giving uh, boot priorities using boot priorities which from which device you have to load operating system it helps operating system to access hardware devices Okay, this is about your BIOS. This BIOS contains some information like your hardware information. We can change certain settings of hardware related through BIOS settings. BIOS. is a chip set right so bios is your rom chip your rom chip contains a program called bios it is nothing but firmware and this bios contains information about your hardware and also hardware features the settings in the bios settings if you can able to go to the bios settings you can change or you can check this uh, hardware uh, features are hardware settings how to go to bios settings how to go to bios settings okay how to go to bios settings? It's a, a where simple. Just when you power on your system, sometimes you can observe immediately after power on your system. You can observe there is a key uh, BIOS key shows like F two to set up, F nine to set up, F one to set up, F ten to set up, kind of stuff. Which is nothing but your BIOS key. Okay. So when you are power on your system, it shows what is your BIOS key. Okay, if it is not showing, means you have to search based on your laptop model, like your maybe your processor model. So like that. Okay, so your usually your laptop model. So search what is your BIOS key. Okay, power on your system and press the BIOS key. So then you can go to BIOS settings. You can go to BIOS settings. So once you are into the BIOS settings, you can check or change the date and time. So I am getting date and time. That same date and time in my BIOS. Okay, you can set a password so then no one will uh, is coming to your system and changing your uh, uh, hardware configurations or hardware settings and kind of stuff. 
you can enable disable certain hardware features like a virtualization technology features kind of stuff. You can change boot priorities. Okay, you want to get booted from a uh, hard disk. You want to get a uh, install operating system. So first boot device is CD-RAM. Next one is hard disk. Okay, so like that, you can change the boot priority and then save and exit. Guys, I said set password is a BIOS password. Okay, it is password to your BIOS settings. If anybody want to change your BIOS settings, another is user, this password will name give you protection. System configuration. Check. To check the system configuration, we have seen first day of class how to check system configuration. CPU, RAM, hard disk, SSD, DVD, that information, we can get it. Okay, so this is how to go to BIOS settings. In this one, this is system configuration and date and time. You can you see there is a date and time running. Okay, it, it has to be run continuous. And CPU information, i7 4500U model and it D L3 cache memory, 4 MB cache memory, fixed hard disk, 1 terabyte, uh, SATA uh, CD DVD, it is what is the total memory ram size and uh, uh, ram clock speed 1600 megahertz means ddr3 ram only see i got a system configuration from bios settings and also you can observe date and time okay guys up to here yes sir So this is, uh, guys, this BIOS manufactured by different manufacturer are given only three names. ME BIOS, Edward BIOS, Phonics BIOS, Dell BIOS. This is in C Dell 20. That is uh, that BIOS thing, okay? So like this, different BIOS versions different BIOS manufacturers will give different type of options on the screen. Okay, so it is not always same. But concept is same. For example, you can see you want to change your hardware related settings. Core multi processing is enabled. You want to disable, you can disable. You can see Intel virtualization technology. It is a built-in Intel virtualization technology is there. If you disable it, so in that system, we cannot create a virtual machines locally. Okay, so to enable it, so you have to come here, change it in a, from disable to enable. Now it is enabled. Okay, and you can set a password in a security. So set user password. Supervisory password and user password for security to secure your BIOS settings. This is the boot priority. When you start your PC, so PC has to take operating system from either from hard disk or CD-RAM or pen drive or through network. Okay, but which order? Which order it has to check? So as per this order, first system will check. Voice in the CD-RAM is there or not? Now then go to the next device. Is voice is there in the any USB drive? Yes means load it. Otherwise no means go to next. So is voice in the hard disk is there? Yes then load it. Otherwise go to next. Check operating system from that. Guys, this is about your BIOS settings. Understand guys, BIOS settings?
Yes, sir. Somewhat. Somewhat. Yes. Really, it will. It will. You will get a only five ten percent only. Okay. Because really, uh, how many people really seen by your settings? Computer hardware. So that's all. just to show you the screen how it is look like on the guys. Okay. Really, with with one shot you will know it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's difficult. It's not like that. Okay. So there is a BIOS battery. This battery you may hear about CMOS battery. Yes, this is a CMOS battery which is lithium battery this is not the manufactured with the cmos technology it is a just lithium battery with a 3 volt supply you know bios means your rom chip means your eprom chip contains information because it's rom and we think it is permanent memory but if it is a permanent memory you cannot change information right there is a memory information is there but we cannot change information in it. But we can able to change means. So there's certain things you can change it. The change is temporary. For example, date and time. You can change date and time and it keep runs the date and time as long as system is running. System running, power supply to your BIOS chip and it will run the data. OK, your BIOS passwords are given and also we can able to change. It's not permanent, right? So this is also become temporary. The settings you can able to change it. So right means it is a change of setting is temporary. So this is our all temporary data in the your BIOS chip. Then power is gone when power is Turn off, you shut down your PC, the temperature, temporary data can be lost. Temporary data can be lost. All settings go to. It's not able to enable for. Ram. Let me see your statement again. Okay, so when you power on, you power off your system, shut down your system. So uh, that settings, bio settings go to. Factory default. But this battery is also present in mouse. No, no, not in mouse. Battery, mouse, battery. <coughs> mouse don't have any settings, right? I think so. Okay, sir. Not mouse, okay? So maybe it's in your uh, inside your mobile that is can be there, okay? Guys, here it is. The settings what you can able to change it or uh, you the date and time running the passwords you are given that 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 data stores in your BIOS temporarily. OK, when you shut down your PC, so power supply is not there means temporary data gone. So your BIOS settings go to factory default by default. What are the data is there that will be there? Default settings only it will be there. Then what to do? Connect a, this three volts lithium battery. So this three volts lithium battery will give a power supply to your BIOS chip. Give a power supply to your BIOS chip. So because of this power supply, even you shut down your PC, even you shut down your PC, the battery will keep giving a power supply to BIOS chip. Okay. So then the data, the date and time will run continuously. The passwords are alive. The settings are will be like that only. OK. It's called CMOS battery. That's it because of the CMOS is a technology used to manufacture chips. Your BIOS chip, your processor, your RAM, audio chips, all these things are manufactured by CMOS technology. It is a MOSFET technology, MOS, MOSFET and MOS VMOS combination. It is a CMOS.
battery which powers CMOS battery, CMOS memory is called CMOS battery. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we call this one as a CMOS battery or a BIOS battery. Guys, lot of people think CMOS battery and there is abbreviation complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So they think CMOS is a technology of battery. No, guys. It is battery is lithium battery, three volts battery. It's not rechargeable battery, okay? But this is the, uh, the it will give you know power supply to your uh, CMOS and uh, means that CMOS chip means your BIOS chip. It works for more than five years, okay? So that's the way. Okay, CMOS is a chip manufacturing technology. When you remove your battery, if you remove your battery and reinserted battery, when you remove your battery and reinserted a battery and leave like that, next uh, you start your PC, you may get this kind of error. CMOS checksum error. On the screen, if you see CMOS checksum error, means either it is someone removed the battery and reinserted battery or your BIOS shape got certain problem inside a BIOS so there may be a some problem inside in generally BIOS battery problem only BIOS battery related issue only. it is can be uh, every time means first time you came and you change the BIOS settings again you change the BIOS settings and you run, then OK. But every time you start your PC, you are getting a CMOS checksum error. The battery become weaker or it is low power or no power kind of stuff. So what you have to do? Go to shop and buy a battery and insert a battery. Insert a battery. OK, so here this is small liver is there you pull the liver the battery will come out and take out a battery and insert a new battery okay guys understand up to here what how many things have i told yes sir so ram rom cpu okay okay you turn bye So remaining parts are motherboard and uh, some PS. Storage is there. Storage I don't take now. Okay. This motherboard SMPS only one one two two sentences only. Okay. Just keep sitting like that only. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Later once you are having time, then read it. The storage is part uh, uh, I will tell tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow the timing would be 10:30 a.m. Right. Uh, morning 10:30. Any changes I will inform. If in case any changes happen, I will inform. Morning 10:30. Okay, sir. By by here, so I confirm. Karna. The morning I will, uh, even night I will confirm. I will send one message for remaining. Morning also will, 10 o'clock I will tell her to join. Same link only. So you don't have any communication session, right? We usually Saturday, madam won't take it. Okay. That's it. If you want to, me to cover morning and afternoon also, no problem for me. At least syllabus will complete faster. No confusion. Yeah. Topics will cover. <laughs> if you are not getting anything, better to take a single session. Uh, half day, half day better because you didn't study anything <laughs> till now. So at least Saturday. So once morning session completed, you take rest. Evening open entirely. So take one one chapter and complete it. Okay. Just I need a just 10 minutes. I will complete uh, both motherboard and. So, I'm going to
Guys, here it is. Okay. What is the mother? What happened, guys? Change it. Who is speaking or asking? Motherboard. Motherboard is a main circuit board. Guys, every device, either directly or indirectly, whatever it is, from externally, compulsory, all devices should be connected to motherboard only. That's the main important. Okay. So it's uh, all devices and the components are connected directly or indirectly. CPU should be connected on motherboard. RAM slots are on motherboard. SMPS power supply connected here. You have a graphic card that is also should be connected to motherboard. Okay. Even you want to connect a keyboard, externally you have to connect a keyboard. Okay. Mouse you are connecting outside that is also connecting to your motherboard only. Okay. Hard disk is connecting to your motherboard only. Okay. You have a different slots on a, a motherboard processor slot, memory slot, PCI slots, okay, AGP slots, and on motherboard chip cells also available like a video chip, audio chip, network connectors, network related chipset is there, okay, power supply connectors, CMOS batteries, front panel connectors also there. These are the RAM slots, this is how you can able to insert a RAM. That I have, I got a picture and I'm sharing to the end. This is a back panel of RAM. Fast forward key, right? What happened, guys? This is motherboard, one view, internal view, but outside means you go to cabinet and uh, see the side of the cabinet. You will see motherboard back panel. Okay. You go to the cabinet and uh, you see the outside of back side of this cabinet is nothing but your motherboard back panel connector. Depends upon motherboard and uh, version of motherboard, the back panel connectors are may vary. This is for a US, uh, PS by 2 keyboard and mouse. Now we are using USB keyboard and mouse. Earlier we use PS by 2. Now also again. Oh, specifically add Garavana Chara. Yes, man. So new, if you are speaking, okay, no problem, but we keep in. So I, I just need 10 minutes. <laughs> That's it. This is VGA port. VGA port is like a monitor port. Guys, clearly see. The pictures uh, means maybe you're not seen original computer, yeah, but yeah, this for attack a user dot mail. Yeah. Okay. VGA display so connecting monitors or a you know projector kind of stuff we can connect. This is parallel port. Earlier days, they use a, a line printers. So that's it is called a line printer terminal. Okay, parallel port. A line printer means the printer only. It is nothing but a printer like a dot matrix printer. So their connectivity for to system, they use this parallel port like this big port. Correct. Now we are getting USB again. Okay, USB replace so many type of ports. COM port, communication port for uh, connecting your uh, external modem to your system. So they use a COM port and also to connect other devices uh, for communicating purpose. They use it. Now we are not using this COM port. COM port, serial port, RS-232, all are same only. USB ports, RJ45 connectors are there. This is audio jackets, audio uh, speakers, line-in connectors. 
Okay, so this is, so it is ES by two connectors, keyboard and mouse connectors, USB, universal serial bus, old model it is, new model is, green color it is showing. Next one is uh, VGA, VGA monitor connector, serial port connector, or you can say RS-232, or you can call it as a COM port. So don't get confused, serial port, COM port, RS-232, three are same. Parallel port or a line printer terminal, LPT, same, okay. This is LAN port, LAN port, RJ45 port, Ethernet port, all are same, same way, okay, your network connectivity. HDMI port, this is I added, HDMI port, so you can connect to a computer, okay, or monitor, so from your computer to your monitor, or to TV, or to projector through HDMI cable. HDMI transfers both video and audio data. Okay. Okay. This is about a, your motherboard, motherboard, back panel connectors, and motherboard slots. Okay. Okay, guys. Yes, sir. Okay. So next one is SMPS. What is the use of this SMPS? In generally, in desktop, you have this kind of SMPS. But, you know, to charge your mobile phone, we have a charger, right? What is there inside? It is SMPS. Inside, what is it? SMPS. You have laptop. There is a charger. Is there, no? The, that is also SMPS. What is SMPS? Switch mode power supply. Switch mode power supply. What SMPS will do? It converts your AC power supply to DC power supply. Okay, SMPS converts AC power supply to DC power supply. Our main power supply is 220 volts, 50 hertz frequency. But our computer, laptop, mobile phones, these electronic devices works with a DC power supply. Okay. In our computers, need a different type of DC voltages. Plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, plus 5 volts, 3.3 volts and ground. Means common port is there. How to get it? So your SMPS is converting your main power supply, this is 220 volts AC power supply to the DC power supply. Okay, so different type of connectors are there guys. This is called a 24 pin. This is 20 plus 4, 24 pin. Uh, ATX connector, 24 pin ATX connector which we connected to motherboard directly. If you see this yellow black kind of stuff, this is 4 plus 4 uh, SMPS to motherboard connector for CPU purpose. So separate power supply to your CPU. Yellow it is not there, now CPS are become more powerful, so you have to give additional power supply. Okay, this is called a Molex connector. So four pin connector is there now. That is a Molex connector, just connected to hard disk. For a hard disk and CD-RAM power supply. Same, this is also same thing. SATA type of hard disk uh, need a power supply. So SATA type of hard disk, DVDs. For power connectivity, we use this type of connector. Okay, this is SMPS. What SMPS will do? It convert AC to DC power supply and it will give different type of DCs and different type of connectors. So connecting from SMPS to motherboard, SMPS to hard disk, SMPS to CD-RAM, connecting PD is there. Okay. 
over here. Yes, sir. That, that's it. Okay, for today. Tomorrow we are going to discuss about a different storage devices and hard disk SSDs, disk partitioning, and we'll try to complete MBR GPT. Okay, that much only. And if I have a time, then I will tell about a boot processing. Okay. That's it for today, guys. Just go through once, go through small, small, one, one point, two, two points about thing. What is SMPS two points? What is mother about two, three points? That's it. At least you people should think like you know it. <laughs> okay. For a few things. For a few things, compulsory, you should know the correct definitions and that. Like a service desk, uh, networking side, uh, RAM and ROM differences. Okay, like this. A okay, few uh, troubleshooting we will share also. Okay, that's it for today. I have opened so many things here. I will close it first. Start reading, guys. 